Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We are looking at divine equipping to maximize your youth. You know I dealt with extractions, necessary extractions for us to make the most of your youthfulness. And we're looking at your irreversible mandate that heaven is demanding for you to fulfill. And as I was about concluding yesterday night and this morning, the Lord again began to speak to me for myself. Say, and you shall go to everywhere I have ordained you to go. As if there is no two way about it. This mandate on your life is irreversible. That you have been raised by God for signs and for wonders in this generation. And that God is deliberate in bringing you into this move of God at this time and at your age. God is deliberate. And he says, do not say, I am only a youth. You will go everywhere I have sent you. And you will speak everything I have commanded you to do. But now, what is the divine equipping for carrying out your mandate in maximizing the years of your youth? One of the things that I felt God would do before this Congress will conclude is that he will equip you. He will send you forth with, with correct equipment with which to do battle for him at the gates. And that's what we will be spending this message and the next series of things we'll be doing today before we come to the end of our meeting in that night. And this kind of equipping that God will lay on your life because the battle is not to the strong, it's not to the swift. He says it's not by power, it's not by might. But by my spirit, says the Lord, isn't it? When God went and confronted Gideon and showed him the oppression of the Midianites, I hope you remember what Gideon also said. He said, why are you talking to me like this? I am nobody. My father is not in Israel and I am the least of my father's house. What did God say to him? God said, go in this your might. You will deliver Israel. You remember that was God said to him. Eh? And I saw that though Gideon was a young man, he was the last born of his father. His father was a non-entity in the, in the compound. And what he was doing, as at the time that God was meeting him, he was just, uh, what was he doing? He was beating the wheat 
to gather a little to go and hide it. God said, no, 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 no. You have something to do. But a small boy. But that night, something happened to Gideon that turned him to a different man. I don't know how to describe what happened to him. Because you see, me as I'm reading the Bible, I see transition, transformation that you cannot explain. How could somebody who was just, uh, who was just beating guinea corn yesterday, how, what could have happened to him over the night that he's standing up to blow a trumpet? And nobody said, where is he coming from? Has he been a captain before? And people followed him. And he gathered these thousands. And the Lord said, yes. But those ones are too many. I will, I will select the 300 for you. And God gave them what they need to use. I look at such transitional moments that saw went as a young man looking for his father's asses. Do you remember? But that encounter he had with Samuel, the Bible said by the time he was going back, God gave him another heart and turned him to another man. Ah, he went as a small boy looking for his father's ass. He returned as a man with capacity to lead the army. So I'm also believing God that beyond everything we have discussed and that we are discussing, there will be a divine equipping that will come upon your lives. That when you get back, people will be wondering, ah, is it not this girl that went to Boko? How did she come back with this kind of boldness? With this kind of authoritative life? Ah, is it not the timid boy that we used to know? How did he just go to Boko for a student congress? And he has returned now and is leading a battle, shaking the gates of the enemy. Is this not that quiet, that quiet brother? We've never heard his voice in the fellowship. How did he just go for that meeting? And everything about him has changed. His hunger for the word of God has become something that we can't explain. His prayer life has changed. Ah, his passion for souls is something that is contagious. If you move near him now, he will infect you with a fire. Do you know that I am expecting that kind of transitional impartation on your life today in the name of Jesus Christ? Do you know that we are not just waiting on ordinary things? We are trusting God for the supernatural. We are trusting God for something that will come upon your life and you will never remain the same again. I received a, 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 a mail from my roommate on the campus several years. I received a mail yesterday because he was discussing with me about certain things now in his life and ministry is a pastor. So I decided to respond to him by telling him, by reminding him the prayers I used to pray with him when he was my roommate. I reminded him, I said, do you remember there are these, these things that we knelt down before God. We prayed about. We took 
stand with God over. Do you remember that God opened a diary for our prayers? And that God, who is not unrighteous to forget anything we told him, he has been working on those things. Me, I'm saying it. So I reminded him, I said, do you remember this happened, this happened, that happened, that happened? He said, wow. So he sent me a mail yesterday. He said, I had to reread your letter over and over and over again because it brought back to me the covenant that we made with God. I said, yes. What touched me was that he remembered a meeting we attended. We went for a village meeting As we went, we were fasting and praying and reaching out to villagers. We all left from the campus. So it's not a big issue. And you are not too young to experience all of that. So we went. We had asked the president of our fellowship to be the evangelist to preach the crusade in the evening. And I am the coordinator of the village thing that we are doing. So all the brethren that we went with were about 200 students who went for that outreach. But something happened. I just gathered the brethren and said, well, we welcome to this village let us just take charge. Let's just pray. Let's just thank God. That's how we started. And the Holy Spirit will not allow us to stop praying. We started around 5 p.m. We just, we couldn't stop. We just told the president, keep, go and pray to the people. God has engaged us here. We are praying. The crusade finished, they met the people still crying to God. And the prayer that started at 5 p.m. did not end 5 a.m. And as this, I mean, you know, I thought I was the conductor who needed to dismiss the brethren. So I went, said, in the name of Jesus, let's share the grace. As I was saying that, I heard the Spirit saying, who told you to dismiss my people? And then somebody in the in congregation, one sister, lifted up her voice. My children, I have not yet dismissed you. I don't know who told him to dismiss my people from my presence. Ah. You know the visible presence of the Holy Ghost. That's how the prayer continued. Nobody could stop. They were just in the spirit. 10 a.m. were there. That was a meeting that we went and even though we did not plan to fast, there was no time to eat. But you know, when we had a little space, I said, okay, Lord, can we break into villages and go? He said, yes. People went, they came back with all kinds of miracles. Some went to a village and as they were getting there, they were bringing out a corpse of a woman they want to go and bury. And everybody was crying. And these brothers just arrived. And they said, what is happening? They said, this woman just fell down dead now. And these brothers, 200 level, the university, they felt, yes, but we have been with God since yesterday night, and God said, whatever we ask. So they said, stop, stop. And that's how they prayed. And the woman opened her eyes and jumped up. This was happening by the hand of students. 
other people will come from here this one coming here and the report was so much and as they were finishing their report we went on praying again and the meeting continued without break till the following day so now we are right there Friday this is Sunday morning we have not slept nobody was hungry because the presence So the following, that Sunday, the Spirit of God continued. Those that we can send for, you go and preach in that village, go and preach in that village, they went. As they were all going reluctantly, they didn't want to leave the presence. We said, no, go, we send you, the presence of God will go with you. By the time they are returning at 3 p.m., they still met us there. So now I'm looking at my time and say, look, people have to go back to campus now. Uh, yes, Lord. So I quickly went to organize one Gongoro vehicle to carry them back. The Gongoro has arrived. I have paid money. Where we were kneeling down to pray, as I got in there to, to join them in prayer, and just, just to say, let's stand up, let's stand up, because the Gongoro has arrived. Oh, the Holy Ghost. I see somebody just held me up like this and knocked me on the floor. What? Say you, who told you to dismiss my people? That gongoro, my children will not enter into it. Ah, Lord, what is the matter? So I have not finished dealing with you people. While I was crying because I felt I have so much I've disappointed what God said, you like this, I want to use you and this how you will mismanage my work. Ah, Something happened. The whole camp broke into tears. And we were from that time until 2 a.m. Monday morning. You don't understand that something is going to happen that will set you as a launching pad for the days ahead of you in the name of Jesus Christ. So why we were still in that praying, God came down and began to speak and began to release the gifts of the Holy Spirit <coughs> upon different of us. And I could not forget what happened that night, that morning. And from that point, I have never been the same. I came back from that outreach a different man. The things that I'm having to do now after several years were all discussed with me that day. Some of what you are saying now they were mentioned at that point. So when that brother said, I was there, I was there, I felt like calling him back and said, bro, wake up. Wake up. But this morning, I'm feeling and I'm begging God that a supernatural we attend to your lives. The kind of things that God is speaking, ordinary thing, ordinary hand, ordinary human uh, sense cannot carry it out. There has to be an equipping from above. There has to be a divine impartation that will set you to accomplish that. So for this morning, as I want to introduce that equipping, go back to your Jeremiah 1, which we have been reading, but this time I want to add several other small, small passages in order to give it a breath for you to know that it's not just about Jeremiah. It's about you. It's about me. 
And that's what we want to believe God for this morning and for the rest of the day. You see, when the Lord has said to him in verse 7 and verse 8, the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Do you remember that? Now verse 9. Then, then, the Lord put out his hand and did what? And touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold! I have done what? I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms. To do what? To pluck up and to break down. To destroy and to what? and to overthrow to build and to plant then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me behold I have put my words in your mouth equipment divine equipping for you to maximize your youth in the discharge of your mandate. But before I begin to speak into that, I want you to just let just let just enlarge a bit so that you can see that every man, every woman that God raises up to use, it is not just useful exuberance. It is not just personal motivation it is that there's a divine hand that has been put on their lives and that we are not going to send you forth empty handed God will not do that because the enemy you are going to confront at the gate is not coming empty handed are you understanding God put his hands said then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me behold I have put my words in your mouth see I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down to destroy and to overthrow to build and to do what to plant Now, I want you to go quickly. Look at Isaiah. I'm just trying to show you that there are different times that God does things to the men at the turning point of their lives. And it's a divine equipping. You remember in Isaiah chapter 6, where you saw Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Do you remember that? Eh? In Isaiah chapter 6. And when he came under that vision, when he saw the Lord, Isaiah said in verse 5, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Look at what the Bible says. Then flew one of the seraphims to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he has taken with the tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth, and he said, he laid it upon my mouth, and he said, Lo, this has touched your lips. 
and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purge. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, What? Here am I. Send me. If you go to Isaiah 51, follow me quickly to Isaiah 51. I'm just trying to again tell you that when God brings a young man to where he has brought you and I've seen several of you come out crying and say Lord I'm ready uproot everything that is contrary to my mandate in life God does not end it there a divine hand will come upon you God himself will impact something to your life so that going from here there's something with which to run with. Look at chapter 51 of Isaiah and can you quickly check verse 16. He said, and I have put what? My words in your mouth and I have covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may do what that I may do what I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say to Zion thou art my people you know as I read that I say God So the word that God is putting in a man's mouth is what he was intending to use that he may plant the heaven, lay the foundations of the earth, and declare to Zion, you are my people. When he laid his hands upon the mouth of uh, Jeremiah in chapter 1, he says, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I've set you this day over nations, over kingdoms, to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. And that is by the word of the Lord in his mouth. And when you go further, you come to chapter 61 and say, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. As you check through one scripture to another, you'll find that there is a divine equipping to carry out your assignment, isn't it? When you come to the New Testament, even for Jesus, for Jesus, When it was time that he would respond to all that he came for and he went for that John's baptism, he was praying for something to happen. What was he praying? That the heavens might be opened to him. And the Bible says, and the heavens opened to him. There was a voice that came from above. And from that, we also noted that the Bible said, and the spirit of the Lord descended and sat upon him like a dove. And from that point forward, from that point forward, do you remember that many of the Pharisees, many of the big old men, the question they were asking is that, where did he learn all these things? Where did he get this power? Is he not the son of Mary? Don't we have his brothers and sisters here with us? Ha -ha. Is he not the carpenter's son? What were they trying to do? They were trying to intimidate him with his youth and with his background that they knew, but they did not know that something else has come upon him, the power of the Lord. So this morning, as in a beginning, an introduction unto your being released 
from student congress this year to go and multiply we are asking God to put out his hand and to touch your lives but I want to deliberately now come back and look at that verse 9 and verse 10 very deliberately and within a, a, a why that we have to do this get you ready to start praying if we did not go far we're coming back to continue and our night meeting is going to be that night when we do nothing but to say now Lord shoot me forth shoot me forth launch me out with a momentum create a trajectory for my journey launch me to your target so that my life might also be an answer and a joy unto you in these days of my youth so please go back now to verse 9 of Jeremiah verse 9 of Jeremiah chapter 1 then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in your mouth God will not send you forth empty handed God does not, is not like Egyptian tax masters that will send you to go and do a job and he will not have provided all the straws that you needed. God will not ask you like, like they sent Uriah to a place where the battle was very tough and they departed and left him alone to perish God does not do that but I want you to look at that equipment that God was putting for this man and the Lord said to me I have put my words where in your mouth I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. You see, I was expecting that when God said, I have put my words in your mouth, I thought that what they would have said is that to preach or to speak. Because to me, all about words is speaking. Abi? But I saw what God is looking for. Not just empty talking. God said, I have put my words in your mouth. And see, I have set this day, set this day. I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out can somebody describe the meaning of the word to root out? What's the meaning of that word? To root out. I thought someone would be bold enough just to jump up and say yes. What is it? To evacuate. Eh? Yes? To do what, sir? To uproot the tap root inside. I'm hearing another voice somewhere. To, to eliminate forcefully. To excavate. <laughs> to completely take 
out from its root to root out now ordinarily when you are to root out something what kind of instrument do you need you will have needed a digger or an excavator or what again ah, ah. but I was hearing God I have put my word in your mouth and by that word in your mouth you will do what you will root out Does it then mean that the word of God when God releases it to a man's life has capacity to uproot what had been standing in people's lives for many years? Eh? Does it then mean that the word of God actually is a bulldozer? That things that have been planted for years and it needed to be uprooted so that men's life can be free and the community can be released that if God were going to still do it he would do it by the instrumentality of his word his word but in your mouth he said to root out I was deliberate in looking at what God wanted to do with the word of God in my mouth. He said to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant. All by what? By the word in my mouth. I sense that for us to be able to accomplish our mandate even in our youthful days we are going to cry to God together that God will put forth his hand and touch your mouth touch your lives and impact to you what it will take To uproot things as you go for God. As I was looking at the story of Elijah, I mean of, uh, of Jeremiah, that thing that God said to him, and I noted that from that point forward, something changed about his ministry. I found that each time he opened his mouth to say something, no, things were shaking and quaking in the land. Of course, people did not understand nor appreciate what is happening because they saw him as a hindrance to wickedness. They didn't allow, they didn't allow wickedness to prosper again. But I saw that it was a divine equipping that brought him to do that for God. By the time he came to chapter 50 or 51 he said you are my battle axe eh? and I was wondering how could God be talking to people human beings and say you are my battle axe let somebody quickly go to that the last chapter of Jeremiah and see what again was being declared Jeremiah chapter 51 Jeremiah 51 verse 20 who would like to read that for us verse 20 eh? eh that's NIV all right I'm hearing you uh -huh. I can't understand what, what was the word they were using. Ah, 
Baba, I want you to read it again because I need the brethren to hear what it means. No, no, no. He's still going to read. This man is still going to read for me. Now start again. You are my. Uh -huh. You are my weapon for battle. With you, I will shatter nations. What's the meaning of to shatter? Eh? <laughs> I will shatter. You see, as I'm looking and reading that scripture, I say, oh, oh. This is not a friendly word. This is not a palliative word. I will shatter nations. Yes, sir. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will shatter horse and his rider. I will shatter man and woman. I shut out old man and youth. Eh. <laughs> With you, eh. I shut out young man and young woman. Wow. <laughs> With you, I shut out shepherd and flock. With you, I shut out farmer and oxen. With you, I shut out governors and officials. Are you ready for God to do that with you? Yeah. Say, you are my battle axe. The King James reader that I wanted to read, can we have a King James reader now? You are. You know, there are many battle axes in this meeting. And the devil is going to suffer damage because of you in the name of Jesus. It's true. Yes, sir. Wait, 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 wait. I know. You see, <laughs> this is the time to do it. And these are the people that God is planning to use. But because they are recording, let's allow the man that has the microphone. Thou oh, no. art my battle heart. Yes, sir. And weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. I, so the word shatter is to do what? Is to break in pieces nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Yes, sir. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. The horse and his rider will break him. I will shatter them. Yes. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Yes. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. Hmm. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. Old and young. Yes. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. Yes. I will also break in pieces with thee. The shepherd and his flock. Yes, sir. And with thee will I break in pieces the husband man and his yoke now, of oxen. Now, you see, there was a recurrent, a recurrent, recurrent word that we have been saying there. With you, I will break. With you. I was saying, Lord, if it is you that you will break, why do I need to be involved? If it is still God that say, I will shatter nations. But it is my privilege that God is saying, you, you are done my battle axe. You are my weapon of war. It is with you I want to do what I want to do. It is with you I want to shatter kingdoms. I want to uproot what I have not planted, it has to be uprooted, but I need to use you for it. I am equipping you for such an assignment. I am releasing you for that kind of assignment. With you, I want to do it. 
Have you finished? Up and to with thee yes, will sir. I break in pieces captains and rulers. Yes, sir. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea mm. all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, see the Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So when God said, see, I have put my word in your mouth. And this day, I have set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root them out by the word of God that will come upon your mouth. When it was time for God to raise Ezekiel, I wanted to see what happened to Ezekiel also because I just felt that all the young people that we have been describing that God had used, we did not, they did not only do those things because they were young, but because God did what? Equip them. You remember we talked so much about David. Eh? We talk about David facing Goliath in chapter 17. But will you forget chapter 16? What happened to him in chapter 16? Eh? He was anointed. Why his senior brothers were rejected? The oil came upon this young man. And the Bible says, from that time forward, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. So, when he went to the field to face Goliath, do you know that that was an anointed young man? Hallelujah! So, the difference between David and his senior brother, what is the difference? The anointing. The anointing is the difference. What is the difference between David and Saul, the king that was hiding in a cave? What is the difference? On one, the spirit has departed. On the other one, the spirit of God has come. That was the difference. What was the difference? What is it that made the difference in the life of Joseph? They constantly said, and the Lord was with Joseph and made whatever he did to prosper. There's an equipping. The equipping with the presence of the Lord, the equipping by the word of the Lord, the equipping by the anointing. That's what makes the difference. What made the difference in the life of young John the Baptist? When the Bible spoke about the Pontius Pilate, the Julius Caesar, and all the high-ranking officers, in that Luke chapter 3, the Bible said, and the word of the Lord came to John. Where? in the wilderness, in the desert. That was what made the difference. What will make the difference between you and the people you are going to meet from now on is the anointing. The word of the Lord that will come to your mouth. The presence of God that will set you upon you permanently from this meeting. That will be the difference. What will be the difference when you get back to the campus? It will be that the word of the Lord has come to your mouth. The difference is not going to be that you change dress. No. The difference is not going to be because you grew taller. No. The difference will be that the Lord has touched your mouth with his word. What will be the difference when you will lead the Bible study in your fellowship when you go back there? The difference will be that the hand of the Lord has touched your mouth. 
the difference between Gideon and all the people who are, who are under the bondage of the Midianites was that something came on his life. God said, go in this your might. I will be with you. What will make the difference in your life as a young man from this meeting will be this equipping that God is about to release upon us today. Do you know that Jesus actually will not allow those people that he raised to go until he has equipped them. Did he equip them? Eh? He will equip you also in the name of Jesus Christ. For you to go and make a difference. Because God actually is going to make you his battle axe, a weapon of war. With you, he said, I will shatter man and woman. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to when with, your, with you, as you go back there, men and women who have been comfortably living in sin, they will be shattered. I used to enjoy it. I'm still trusting God that God will show me greater days. I remember that <laughs> when I see a man chasing a girl, something used to tell me that it is your business to go and scatter it. Yes, it, it, something will just tell me that Billy go and, go and scatter that thing. And what do I do to scatter it? I don't go and say, don't, don't talk to this girl again. No, 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 no. I just call either the girl. I say, can I just have a word with you? And I always trusted God that in one hour, the sword will have pierced that girl's heart. I remember when I noticed that one of my lecturer colleagues was running after a girl. And I just called her and said, can you please see me? I need just to chat with you. And the answer, yes sir, yes sir. Hmm? <laughs> By the time the word of the Lord came, the girl started shivering and said, ah, what can I do to be saved? I said, now, now. That relationship you are having with that man, it's finished. He said, yes, because if any man be in Christ is a new creation, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And he gave, down, gave her life to Christ. I said, in order for you to move on, you need to eat. There's no baby that is born that will not be fed. He said, yes. He said, you will come for Bible study at 4 p.m. And the girl was eagerly coming with the word of God. So we sat and we were doing Bible study. And I had told her, I said, if that man calls you again, tell him, depart from me, O wicked man. I will obey the law of my God. Psalm 119. So, <laughs> The man, he said, no, 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 you know, the things I used to do, I do them no more. The men I used to keep, I keep them no more. Ha. The young man said, what? Have you, have you, have you been meeting with Mr. Akani? 
he has scattered something he has scattered something you know what happened the man furiously furiously he came to my house unfortunately unfortunately we were having a bible study you know he came in he said Mr. Akane let us not fight in this place oh I say fight over what? How can we fight? You are my friend now. Please come in, come in, come in. We're having Bible study. <laughs> when he came in and he saw his former girlfriend opening Bible, opening Bible, he didn't know what to do. He said, excuse me, Mr. Akane, please excuse me. You know, I did not intend to come for Bible study. I was rushing somewhere. And so, and then I saw the way he used his eyes to threaten the girl. Just before he would leave, I said, yeah, please wait before you go. Let's just pray for you. Let's just pray for you. Let's just pray for you. You know the kind of prayer I was going to pray. I scattered it. God is going to use you to shatter man and woman. Whose relationship is not correct, you are going to see a change as you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. I told the girl, I said, the battle has started. And greater you see that is in you than he that is in the world. Whenever we met, I met with my colleague on the campus. Uh, I said, you have not greeted me this morning. He said, no. You're always causing confusion on this campus. I said, what is the confusion? He said, you know, you know, you know. One day we were in a meeting, the academic board of the college. We were discussing something else when a very senior principal lecturer said, uh, Provost, I have, I have something to say. It may be off point, but I still need to say it. So we were all waiting. We thought that he was going to raise an academic question. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, the, the students, particularly the female students, they are becoming rude to, to lecturers on this campus. And it's unfortunate that some of us are behind them. So he wants the provost to address this issue. I was still waiting for him to land. So when he spoke like that and the prophet said, well, he doesn't understand what uh, Mr. So-and-so is talking about. Does anybody have something? I said, yes, sir. I said, uh, I wish, I wish we would have asked him to give us a particular illustration of how these uh, students were becoming rude to lecturers so that we can know how to deal with it properly. <laughs> so the man broke out. He said, Mr. Provost, actually, as a matter of fact, this is the man that is causing the confusion. This is preaching, 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 preaching. So I said, oh, if it is like that, sir, this is not an academic board discussion. Let us discuss it when we finish so we can deal with the issue properly what are you also telling those girls that they are getting rude to you can you imagine any girl just seeing a lecturer passing and he will just come and be abusing the lecturer ah, ah. I said excuse me sir there must be something there that is causing this problem if we don't deal with the cause how can we be chasing the effect so you see the issue is that and I tell you 
you will become a terror to the kingdom of darkness. That's what God is raising you up for. He said, see, I have put my word in your mouth. And I have set you over the nations, over the kingdoms to root out. You are my battle axe. With you, I will shatter ungodly relationships, ungodly practices, but by the word in your mouth. So this moment, we are going to call on God deliberately. Lord, equip me. What will make the difference as we will be going from here is that the word of the Lord has come into your mouth. The spirit of God has descended upon you. And the anointing that breaks yokes has come upon your life. That's what God is beginning to do. He says, see, I have put my, my hand upon you. I have put my words in your mouth. And because that same God is eager to release and to mobilize you to go and make a difference. The difference that David made was because of the anointing on his head. The five small stones he carried and he was thrown at Goliath, it was because they were soaked under the invisible anointing that he carried. You may think, but, but is it just ordinary stone? That put, no, there was a power that was driving the stone. There was a power that is pushing the stone and organizing how it will land. So that it did not land on the metal. It went straight and sank deep into the forehead of Goliath. And the man collapsed by the anointing. What will make you to make a difference in your department will be this oil, this anointing, the word of the Lord that will come upon your life from now. So, for us to take this first consignment of this equipping, we are going to arise and pray over that. There's another equipping that we're going to look for when we come to dealing with Ezekiel's own life. It is also the word of the Lord, but it, is a, it, it brought a different equipping that I reserve until we come again. But for this moment, I will want you to, whatever position you like, whether you, you now want to kneel down or you want to stand up, Whatever you want, you are going to say, God, as you put forth your hand and you place it upon the mouth of Jeremiah, as you open the heavens and there was a clear descending of the Holy Ghost like a dove that settled permanently on the head of Jesus. As, as you visited Gideon and that night all his fears disappear and he turned to become a different person and he began to do exploits in the land and he began to shake and began to discipline the Philistines, I mean the Midianites Father Father Let your hand be upon me. Get into any condition, position of prayer. We just want to pray. I just want you to believe God that what will make the difference, what will make the difference after this meeting, the hand of the Lord is coming upon you in a new way. The word of the Lord will come into your mouth. 
The kind of things that God does to a man and changes him. Let's honestly all cry to God wherever you are standing. All of us, let's cry to God. It's not just for one or for two or for three. It's not just for those that are eager. It is for as many as are saying, Oh God, let your hand be upon me. Let your hand be upon me. I want you to spend the next few minutes just to be alone with God.